Hello and welcome to another episode of the Retail Podcast, this time from the Avery Denison booth. And let me tell you something, it's a very impressive booth, quite big. So we'll find out what's on the booth in a minute. I'm joined by Francisco, General Manager at Avery De- Denison. Um, so tell me, Francisco, what is uh, Avery Denison for people who don't know, and I'm sure everyone does know, but what, what do you guys do and what do you, where do you focus? Well, Avery Denson is a material science company that uh, has evolved into the digital technology realm. So we attribute digital identities to items. We believe in the future, items will be able to communicate and to have their own identity. And as such, what we're showcasing here, and we can go into more detail, is really our ability to enable supply chains to become more digital, more accurate, and improve the visibility from an end-to-end perspective. So much to go, and it's an area that I absolutely love. AI, so you make, you simplify lives for retailers in the first instance from what you're saying. Tell me a little bit more about your identity. Is it a platform in terms of, is it RFID? What's the breadth and scope of where you go? It's a great question, and and, um, the theme actually we're uh, showcasing here is we call it CBO because we believe we're trying to support retailers to see beyond the physical and the digital, right? So we typically tend to separate things and we believe the strength lies in the ability to connect those two things. So we both, we, we, we develop design and also manufacture the, what we call the digital triggers, typically by means of radio frequency identification tags that you are able to attach to every single item. At the same time, we have a cloud platform that we call Atma IO that it's able to track the end-to-end uh, of uh, uh, what, what's happening along the supply chain for every single item, whether that's the moment that it was born, where you sort of attribute that identity, all the way through to potentially its end of life and its ability to be recycled and or reused. So uh, today is the Tuesday, the final day. You must have met, I can't imagine how many executives and retailers you've met. Tell me, what, what was the top thing, um, you know, the, the number one question that they were thinking about when they were speaking to you? What's, what's top of mind right now for them? It's a, great, uh, it's a great question and it's interesting. I've been coming to this show for many years now and the question is actually very similar, although it comes through a very different uh, uh, sort of background, if you'd like. And the question is, do I know what I have and what I have it? So in other words, do I have full visibility of my supply chain? And back in the day, this was a, a concern for retailers from an in-store perspective, right? So. You know, I'm a consumer, he or she walks into the store and he or she finds what he's looking for. And then today, as you evolve into the sort of the omni-channel reality and how things are fully connected, that one visibility of truth, if you'd like, the ability to truly maximize that, particularly in a world where, you know, we've seen some slowdown overall in terms of retail, as you know, that becomes even more important, that the ability to have accuracy and visibility is able to support retailers to optimize their inventory and as such, obviously improve their bottom line and do another thing, which is very important that we can touch on, which is do the right thing for the planet, minimize losses, reduce waste, and make sure that they're doing the right thing and not over buying uh, uh, or over producing, if you'd like, uh, from a, uh, from a uh, supply demand perspective. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine in terms of optimization, 100% retailers were focused, let's get up to 90 something percent accuracy in the stock room and then move out. So from, from, a, from your platform and solution perspective, you, you, it's across the, the piece in the, in the sense that where, it's, it's not a warehouse management system as well. Well, it, it, it's really end-to-end visibility, right? So we, we don't focus only on the retail or on the warehouse or uh, the, the, the whole point of the solution that we, uh, that we uh, put forward is we, we create a digital identity in every single item at source and then we allow retailers to track it all the way, uh, you know, whether that's through their distribution centers, you know, inbound, outbound, obviously into their store when it goes into store and or into the retail, you know, into the uh, sort of omni-channel uh, uh, the option as well from an online perspective. And also being able to truly cross-functional things, you know, this buy online pickup in store, as an example, uh, it's something that a lot of people do, but not a lot of people are able to truly optimize the way they supply from store, right? So supply from store is a, it's an interesting thing as long as you're not having too much labor go into it, which then means you have, it's an erosion on your bottom line. So it's all about providing visibility on all those elements that optimize the end-to-end perspective. You, you briefly mentioned um, innovation in terms of some of the new ways that you're doing things. And I know you on, the, on the stand itself, you're demonstrating some of the innovations. 
can you just take me through maybe your your top sort of uh, innovation ideas or your top demos that you've seen? Sure, happy to. So, one, uh, let's let me call it more on the physical side or the digital trigger side. So, mm -hmm. what you actually attach to items to allow them to have a digital identity yeah. and, as such, potentially a digital life. Uh, uh, which is the way of incorporating the technology into the product. So traditionally, the way uh, the technology is attached to products is by means of, say, a price ticket, maybe a care label, maybe a, just a label on a packaging. Uh, and what we're seeing is a migration of retailers wanting to have that, uh, that uh, identity permanently sort of attached to the product so that you're able then to do everything else, you know, the post-purchase, potentially the interaction with the consumer, all the way through to the end of life, recycling, you know, supporting sorting and so on. So that technology, we, we launched a product portfolio that's called Everdance and Text Trace, which is the outcome of an acquisition we've made uh, this past year. Okay. Which basically is a way of seamlessly integrating the identity into either the brand label and or, you know, uh, uh, into specific elements in the case of the retail apparel into the garment yeah. that allows it to stay permanently affixed to it all the way through its end of life. So that's a very, very interesting perspective. Coupled with that is the platform that allows that digital identity to come to life. So Atma IO, we've launched the, uh, the true sort of end-to-end -end, uh, ability to track and trace every item through the supply chain and adding elements of sustainability, you know, from a, a carbon perspective, carbon footprint and so on. So sort of trying to truly enlarge that capability. So being able to answer both the digital side, if you'd like, as well as the physical side. Then I would call those as to being two of the main main uh, innovations we're showcasing this year. So in summary, it's good for the planet. What you're doing minimizes waste and looks at everything else. It helps with accuracy, which helps on all the other aspects of it. Um, in terms of data, a lot of retailers don't have the level of data scientists. How easy is it? Is it quite, do I need to now go and recruit a, a a data science team, what does that look like? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, the reason why we created the platform is exactly to support that. In other words, you know, while you have some very large retailers that they might have, you know, all sorts of uh, 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 capabilities and solutions, there's others that do not. So we believe that the creation of the platform is a means of facilitating that everyone can be on a level playing field and have access to the right tools, the right visibility, that allows them to compete on a like-to-like -like basis yeah. from a sort of end-to-end -end visibility. So it, the question, it, we're trying to make it as easy as possible, and we believe the launch of the Atma IO platform is a very important step in that direction. And, and so final question, in terms of types of retailers that you find naturally drift to a solution like yourselves, are we talking in terms of level of stores, number of SKUs, what, what, what sort of the, some of the details there? Great question. It cuts across. So we work probably with some of the world's largest as well as we do with, you know, uh, smaller uh, uh, sort of specialized or boutique-like uh, uh, players as well. So it, it's more about what's the use case and how do we support them achieve that as opposed to we only work with the large ones or the small ones if you'd, if, if you'd like. So there's, a bit, of a, there's a, a bit of a mix there. The key thing to me is what is it that we're trying to solve? The other thing we're doing here, just to the waste piece, is historically this technology has had a, a, a lot of sort of adoption and penetration in apparel. We're now seeing movement coming more into the fresh food and the whole sort of, uh, as you can see in some places here in our booth, uh, where we believe there it's not just about overproduction, but it's also a sort of an element of perishability you know, that brings the whole layer of waste into a whole different ball game. Uh, we've recently launched a study that showcased that, uh, you know, there's about r roughly 10% of the food gets wasted just by either overproduction or perishability, it, the inability to manage uh, to manage the shelf life, if you'd like. So we believe the, the contribution we can make to the planet, jointly with the retailers, of course, to optimize both their bottom line, but do the right thing for the planet, it's quite significant. I could carry on asking you a ton more questions because I'm genuinely quite curious in this area. Where is, where, where, where is Avery Denison based? How do people find out more about you? Where, yeah, tell me a little bit more. If I'm interested and I want to find some more information about you, where, where do I go? Sure. So Avery Denison is, uh, is, is, is a multinational company. We're actually headquartered in California, okay. uh, uh, in Glendale. Uh, uh, and we, we are, I would say we are, we're everywhere from a, you know, the, uh, 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 a perspective of location-wise, um, you know, I myself, I'm I'm in Europe. A lot of my team is in the US. We have team in Asia, so we're 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 all over. We're about thirty-five thousand people across the world in you know uh, tens of countries. So 
I think it's re the easiest way. It's just to, you know, obviously drop us a line, check our website, averydenson.com. Uh, I'm sure you can, if you search RFID Avery Denson, you're going to find us in multiple places. Uh, and obviously we'll be glad to uh, connect with, uh, with everyone. Yeah, final note. I, I have noticed how RFID, for as long as it's been around, has now really come into its own. People truly understand it's a, a technology that, yes, in the past was quite um, cumbersome, but now I think that's been taken away. But So uh, it's been wonderful meeting you, Francisco. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks.